Hello. Welcome. Or welcome back to Heretic Owl Tarot. My name is Liz, and I will be guiding you on this journey today. This is a reading for Scorpio, wherever Scorpio falls for you. Also, be sure to check out your human design profile reading. I do have all of those done, and they're up. Well, yeah, they're all... <laughs> They're all up, but, um, you know, like not every Scorpio is a three, five or a, uh, you know, six, two, whatever. So, um, just, a, an additional source of information. And if you don't know what your human design profile is, there's a link in the description of those videos for you to get your profile or your human design, um, body graph and your profile will be listed on there. Uh, or you could just Google human design chart and use one of the those links to get it so let's get you an oracle card and then of course we'll get your tarot out We have, you're already doing it. Stop overthinking. Keep facing your true north. Beautiful. I also love that, like, this person is way up here instead of, like, way over here. <laughs> if that makes sense. It looks like, like they've already been on the path, which, I mean, is fitting for the card that says you're already doing it because... You're here. You're not at the beginning. More so in the middle. Already doing something. I also love how there's this hallway over here, which, you know, I mean, it would almost kind of seem like obvious to like, you know, head towards or walk through or whatever, but the, they're not even looking in that direction. So, which, you know, keep facing your true north, right? It's like, if, if there's something that truly is not for you, you you already know that. It's like not, not succumbing to FOMO or, you know, I should because it looks obvious or it's the obvious choice. If that's not what's true for you. I, we have the Eight of Cups. Speaking of <laughs> what's true for you, we have the Six of Swords. We have the Justice card. We have the Wheel of Fortune, which I love because that is with the Eight of Cups. And then we have the Two of Swords and the Page of Pentacles. And then the Four of Swords at the bottom of the deck. Nine of Swords, Three of Pentacles. Interesting. A good amount of like mental, mental stuff happening here. So, you know, like I said, with this, you're already doing it card. I feel like it really is just either, you know, validation, confirmation, affirmation, whatever other shuns <laughs> there is to speak of, of positive um, reinforcement, you know, um, because if you, if you are just kind of feeling that like, ah, you know, I'm, I'm not entirely sure if if this is working out, if this is the, the right direction, or if it's, you know, going to lead me to something, um, that I feel is there, then, you know, again, this is like, it's confirmation that yes, <laughs> you will get exactly out of it. What you feel you will get, you know, stop overthinking, <laughs> keep facing your true north, which like I said, speaking of your true north, right? We have the eight of cups. Cups have to do with our emotions. I mean, Scorpio is a water sign, right? So really being in tuned with your emotions, even your, your intuition, because that's the thing that's guiding you towards your true north or telling you to face in that direction, right? And there's already six cups that are under the water. This one over here is sinking. This one still has like a little bit of a flame in it, but this person obviously decided that that cup's not for me either. And they are walking towards their true north. They're walking towards, you know, I mean, the sun could be coming up here, but what they are walking towards is the nine of cups, which is wish fulfillment, 
having your desires met, feeling purposeful, feeling fulfilled, because it's recognizing that whatever is in these cups that you are leaving behind, it, they just weren't, they weren't it. They weren't, you know, doing what you wanted them to do. Even this one that still has some energy left in it, you know, you recognize fast, and that could be even the thing that's happening for you too, is that you are recognizing more quickly now if something is for you or if it's not. Is it going to support the direction that you're heading in or not? Does it feel good since it's cups, since it's water? Does it feel good or not? And it's not sticking around. <laughs> like I said, there's still this fire in there, right? And it's not sticking around waiting for that, that, um, the fire to go out to see if it is right. So again, you know, like if this is happening more quickly for you, because you are honoring your, you know, the keeping, keep facing your true north you would start to recognize more quickly if something is in support of that or not. I just started thinking about Moana. <laughs> I love Moana. Um, but, you know, when she leaves her island and all she had to go on was she was following, she kept facing her boat towards Maui's hook in the sky, right? That's all she had to go off of was that by following that, she was going to find him. And she did, didn't she? So that's what this Eight of Cups is to me. Following. Because, I mean, look at the difference anyway. This this small little flame versus whatever, you know, is, is potentially on this horizon here. I would choose whatever's on the horizon too. And it is heading towards um, your Nine of Cups. Like whatever is... Um, your wish fulfillment. Speaking of, we have the Wheel of Fortune next. The Wheel of Fortune is a good card. I don't care wherever it shows up. And I mean, it, it showed up in a good placement here. But um, the Wheel of Fortune just talks about things changing. You will recognize something in your life is starting to change, whether, you know, things are moving forward quickly. You know, even just if you have been doing something consistently, like, um, as an example, you know, a workout routine or, um, you know, a, a change in your diet, you know, like if you have been consistently showing up it consistently doing that for an extended period of time, you would start seeing results from that. That's, you know, the wheel of fortune. It could even just be by making this decision to, to leave behind, you know, to keep facing your North then, you know, the, the energy starts moving forward for you. It really is like, you know, however things have been for you, they are going to, to change. And like I said, it's, it's always a good card. If you have felt stuck recently, you are going to be feeling unstuck. <laughs> if you feel like, you know, things have just been stagnant around you, you're going to recognize that there's movement there's, you know, things are, are starting to happen around you. And again, it does come from even the, the consistency, because that word just keeps like cycling through my head, consistency, consistency, consistency. And especially if you are honoring your, your North, whatever, you know, that is for you. And then we have the six of swords. So it's interesting. We have two cards next to each other that are cards of moving forward. The Eight of Cups is making a decision to leave behind, um, you know, emotionally what is no longer serving your highest good. The Six of Swords has to do with your mindset around it. So it's literally your head and heart being in the same, being on the same page, moving forward. Swords have to do with our thoughts, our beliefs, ideas, inspiration, how we're communicating those things. I also see swords as being the suit of ego because that's generally where we hear our ego is in our minds. And um, our ego is created by the stories that we attach to experiences, to feelings. It becomes the reason why we do and don't do things, whether those stories are true or not. 
And you know what is also so interesting? <laughs> is in the back, look here, there's a star on top of this mountain here. And they are literally heading in the opposite direction of that, which is almost what I was saying with the Oracle card. So there's this hallway here, which, you know, it would almost seem obvious to like walk down, right? But they're not even, they're not even facing in that direction. They're not looking at that hallway. They know that's not it. <laughs> so with this Six of Swords here, right, this could have been a false north. You know, it could have been um, false north in the sense of, you know, following somebody else's dream, following, um, you know, a path that was created by somebody else for you, their expectations. It could be, again, a societal thing, a, a cultural thing, a family thing, but it also, with the Six of Swords, the, the whole message with the six of swords is is you're leaving troubled waters and you're heading to you know more peaceful waters which is interesting that swords have to do with more of our mental state but it's a boat in water <laughs> which is you know like water signs it's our emotions this is all about mind set too and it's being, this boat is being guided by these crows. So it really is like allowing yourself to be guided by intuition. I think I might have mentioned that a couple minutes ago. They don't even have that much baggage, like literally just taking with them what they can carry. Ensure that, you know, there might be this feeling of, you know, maybe uncertainty or sadness too, because I mean, you are leaving something behind whether that is like an old thought pattern, an old behavior pattern, um, which is all, you know, kind of ego stuff too. But it really is like allowing yourself to be more future focused and following what is your actual true north. That's crazy. <laughs> it's just so interesting how that happens. You know, like the two cards about like moving forward, being next to each other. That's powerful, you know. And then we have the two of swords. Again, you know, I mean, this this has this feeling of like uncertainty. I don't know if I've already said this. And if I, if I did, I apologize for like repeating myself. But it's like, you know, not having any evidence of, of it working out. It really is, you know, this this trust and this surrender thing. You know, the Two of Swords talks more about indecision. You know, I mean, we have these two crows flying around them. They're blindfolded. It, it seems very discombobulating or, you know, I can just imagine what it would sound like having those crows flying around your head. It would just also even feel like overstimulating. But this is also, it's a lot of like our our thoughts like those gremlins whatever they are getting really loud and it's you know all of the the what ifs the the shoulds the um the stuff that prevents us from being clear-minded even behind them there's a path going to the left and a path going to the right and their back is to it so it's like did they just come off of one of those paths or are they deciding which one they want to even go down even you know the more that I look at her though she feels if the okay so this is a feeling that I'm getting like the more that I look at her face <laughs> actually here I'll, I'll hold it up so you can look at her too the more that I look at her face this could just be um outside like influences trying to dissuade you from staying north you know I, there there could definitely be that i do just kind of keep getting this feeling of like questioning if you made the right decision especially with the six of swords and this eight of this eight of cups you know just wondering if you if you made the right decision feeling a little uncertain 
um, you know, again, just maybe the evidence of the thing isn't either showing up or it's not showing up in a way that you, you thought. There really could be two paths that open up and, and both of those paths could be um, something that you see yourself on and you could be like, I, you know, I, the FOMO thing, like I don't, I don't want to make the wrong decision or I don't want to miss out on something and you wouldn't anyway for all you know they're the same path just broken off into for some reason I don't know why that just came through but you know it's like you're whatever you need to experience you will on either path you're not going to miss anything because no doubt I mean for all you know too these two paths like maybe they they reconnect somewhere down the road right like there's so many possibilities but you know it just we we do get stuck in the um the indecision bit there could definitely just be a decision that you do actually need to make here and then we have the justice card which is libra the wheel of fortune is sagittarius or jupiter you know jupiter is um, conjunct Uranus today, like exactly. So it starts this 14 year new cycle. Justice, like I said, it's, it's attached to Libra, which is Venus. I believe Venus is in Aries right now, but the justice card talks about, um, the scales balancing karma fate. This is even, you know, it's objective truth because truly, you know, justice is only effective when it's based solely on what is true, like divine truth, objective, you know, it's, it's free of any emotions because then it just becomes an opinion when we start inserting emotion into, um, facts, right? Like, you know, I'm just thinking of like the justice system type of thing, you know, like, it really only works when we are solely focused on what we can prove to be fact, what we can prove to be true. Because again, once we start um, inserting our emotions into that, it just becomes an opinion. It becomes a, a personal belief. So there's definitely, there's something in this process where it definitely, it feels faded. It could be clearing karma for you in some capacity. You could be receiving karma good bad or otherwise i mean this feels good so that's positive it's also it's like you know kind of getting what you deserve even this you know this path could be just a, a faded karmic thing but like you know whatever it is though it is going to bring more balance to your to your life to your experience and we have the page of pentacles with it. Pentacles have to do with our money, how we get it, how we save it, how we spend it. It's our time where we physically showing up in our lives. It's our physical body, our possessions, what we place worth and value in. So they're holding the ace of pentacles, which so it's already been established. We can see the roots going around them and even into the ground so i see pages pages as like the apprentices or like the newbies right so this is starting a a new job like you've already received the offer there's something that has already been established here and now it's actually taking action towards that building a a firm foundation, you know, like planting roots. But it's already something that's like begun. It's already in process. And this to me just feels like, again, you know, this confirmation or this validation of this thing taking root. And maybe this is also through this process, you do start seeing the fruits of your labor. It can also be very healing. The Four of Swords is about um, giving yourself time to rest and heal. But again, Swords having to do with our minds is taking a mental break. And behind that is the Nine of Swords, 
<laughs> Which it's almost kind of the opposite because the the four of swords is resting peacefully. The nine of swords is not. The nine of swords is about, you know, doubt and anxiety and fear, the things that that keep you up at night. And again, even, you know, this representation of all of these crows up there, just, it could be our shame stories. It could be whatever, you know, it just kind of lives in our subconscious, but nines are also individual completion. And this one white bird, I don't know if it's also a crow, but it's, it almost kind of feels like it's, it's coming in to um, clear out whatever these crows are. This could be happening in the dream realm, especially since, you know, on the Four of Swords, they are sleeping. But it definitely, there's there's an opportunity here to um, heal the way that you perceive things, the way that you think about things, any, you know, disappointment maybe that you had. What a journey. <laughs> What a journey. Thank you so much for taking me on that with you. I will talk to you soon. Bye.